morning, everyone. I'm Congressman Joe Crowley, the chair of the Democratic Caucus. I'm joined by the uh, vice chair of the Democratic Caucus, the gentle lady from California, Ms. Linda Sanchez. Uh, welcome back. I hope, we all hope that you all had a uh, happy uh, Fourth of July, Fourth of July break. We're happy back here in the nation's capital, uh, ready to work on uh, some big issues. Uh, the question is whether or not our Republican colleagues able to work on anything at all this point in time. Um, but I just want to make some uh, reference to the revelations of the past couple of days. Uh, what uh, has been exposed in terms of the involvement of the Trump campaign through uh, Donald Trump Jr., uh, Mr. Manafort, Mr. Kutcher, uh, in terms of a meeting uh, with a individual who was an agent of the Russian government uh, in uh, response to are offering uh, information that would be damaging to the Clinton administration, and the failure of uh, the uh, Trump uh, uh, campaign team uh, to report that to the FBI uh, and to uh, expose uh, the Russian involvement in the campaign is exceedingly troubling uh, to me and to, uh, I think, the American people. Uh, it really uh, shows a, a very strong movement towards collusion. Uh, although the, uh, what the uh, legal uh, threshold for that is uh, will, is yet to be uh, determined, I guess, by the special prosecutor. Uh, but to show why, the, why it is even more important today, more than ever before, that a sanctions bill be passed here in the House of Representatives and in the, in the Senate bipartisan bill uh, to bring sanctions against uh, the Russian government for their involvement uh, in the election <coughs> in their attempt to not only involve themselves in our election, but as we've seen now even more clearly, uh, what their intent was, was to undermine the, uh, the elections uh, election of uh, Donald Trump. Um, we also want to make uh, note of uh, the lack of progress here. I alluded to in passing, uh, but six months have gone by and there have been really no major accomplishments uh, at all for this administration or for the Republican Congress. Um, and hardworking Americans are looking uh, for more of this Congress than they're getting. Uh, there is talk of canceling part of the uh, August uh, work period. Uh, if uh, Speaker Ryan, I know that there's been some change uh, potentially here in terms of uh, whether there will be a suspension of uh, the break. Uh, but if there is a suspension of the break, uh, I want a day-by-day -day schedule on what uh, bipartisan bills uh, we'll both vote on and work on uh, during that period. Uh, this cannot be just a show for Republicans to make it appear as though they're working to do something when, in fact, they already know they won't accomplish anything. Uh, we, we need to make sure that there's real progress on bipartisan bills like tax reform and infrastructure, for instance. Um, that's what we're looking for. And lastly, this will be a comment um, about a revelation um, that's come out uh, as of yesterday, and that is that my Republican colleagues have said that they will add a rider to the, to the appropriations bills this year, uh, that they intend to offer language that would include the uh, building of a wall along our southern border. Um, I know that the Vice Chair would like to speak about this as well. It's something that we have said all along that the Democratic Caucus uh, does not support and will not support. We've demonstrated that before. Republicans appears to be, they, they appear to be willing uh, to shut down government over a wall that won't work, that won't make Americans safer, and that will not help our economy. But once again, they're bent on a, a political objective uh, and not necessarily a policy objective, whether it's on health care, whether it's on the wall, whether it is on uh, uh, tax reform. There seems to be more politics at play than actual policy at play. And with that, let me turn it over to my colleague, uh, Ms. Sanchez. Thank you, Joe, and welcome back to everyone. Um, it's good to be back in Washington, D.C. We are about 175 days into the Trump administration, and it seems that every day there is another damning revelation about Russia's interference in our elections. Uh, yesterday, in a stunning uh, admission, Donald Trump's son tweeted out the emails for all the world to see in black and white about his contacts with Russian agents. At this point, I don't think any reasonable person could deny that there was a concerted effort by Russia to support Donald Trump's campaign for president. 
Um, but you know, when I go home back to my district, I don't get asked about Russia. Americans are asking me, where is the progress that we were promised? The scandal plagued Trump White House is standing in the way of progress for our country. Um, the White House and the Republican controlled Congress are fighting seemingly endless battles on every front, which means that so long as they're fighting the latest revelations and scandals, they're not achieving the real work that Americans need us to get done. The real work that, you know, working class Americans expect Congress to get done. Um, the president and the Republican Congress promised a bold agenda that was going to help uh, those who were struggling. And I haven't seen much of an actual agenda or anything bold about what they've proposed. The reality is that what they're offering is sort of reheated leftovers of the trickle-down economic policies that we know have been failures in the past. So there's nothing new, there's nothing bold, it's just recycled cold leftovers. Uh, but what is new about their push to privatize Medicare for seniors or slash Medicaid for low-income families? What is bold about cutting taxes for wealthy Americans and big corporations? And how is any of that going to help working families or the average American family in this country? We need to get to work on the issues that matter most to our constituents. Um, but the scandals and the revelations that come out every day, the steady drip of the contacts with Russians and the lies to cover that, the multiple shifting stories that seem to occur at every turn, really suck the oxygen out of the room and don't give us an opportunity to do the work on behalf of the American public that we are sent to do. So uh, we're waiting to see if the Republicans can get beyond the scandals and get their act together and actually propose some legislation rather than outlines and timelines that they seem to blow past at every turn. And whether that's the budget or health care um, or tax reform, they just don't seem to be able to govern. And um, I think that that, uh, unfortunately for the folks that I represent, um, means that uh, they still feel stuck in that pinch where the cost of living is rising and wages are not keeping up with that. And there's a real sense of uh, lack of opportunity in this country, and we need to address that as soon as we can. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. I think um, the revelations, again, uh, that have come out over the past couple of days, um, it's not shocking anymore that they've lied. No one is shocked that Donald Jr. is lying. His dad is a professional at lying. Uh, and Donald Trump Jr. simply has done what his father has taught him to do. That is deny, deny, deny. Uh, but the revelations that he himself uh, forwarded over in terms of the emails themselves, say it all. Uh, when they said that there was no connection whatsoever to Russian agents, uh, no collusion, no involvement, uh, this e these emails demonstrate themselves that the ma these meetings did take place with high-level officials of the campaign, the highest-level officials uh, outside the president himself. The president continued to deny that those meetings ever took place. Um, uh, as Mr. As his son-in-law, uh, uh, Mr. Kushner, as well, denied um, repeatedly. And yet we now know that, that, that a meeting did play, take place. One of the real big questions is how many other meetings took place? Were there any other meetings? Was this the beginning of a quid pro quo, the change in the Republican platform uh, to, uh, uh, to take out uh, issues uh, pertaining to Crimea? Uh, so uh, I think these are uh, some of the questions that will be asked. Uh, we do recognize the work of the uh, special prosecutor uh, and the mission that he uh, is now engaged in. But as we has said in the past, and we can, will continue to say, we believe now even more than ever, given these revelations, the need for an independent commission to be established uh, to further uh, review all the issues that have taken place uh, so the American people have an understanding of what Russia attempted to do, what they were successful at doing, what they missed, and what they will try to do again in the future. We need to get ahead of this now rather than later. And with that, we'll be happy to answer any questions. Yes. Um, on, on the wall, um would you say that the wall is, well, would you say that we're heading towards a, a shutdown and the wall would be the central issue? And I'd also like you to address the uh, NDAA amendments pr process. Is, is the concern, is the reason that an amendment barring uh, Pentagon money from going into the wall, is, is it a concern that they might use the Army Corps of Engineers to build the wall? I, I have no concern as to who they intend to build the wall with. 
That's not the concern that I have, uh, nor do, do, I, do I suspect that uh, Ms. Sanchez, and I don't want to speak for her, I don't think we're concerned about who they propose to build a wall. It's the actual construction of the wall that we oppose. Um, and uh, it's a rider, it, you know, plain and simple. Uh, this is an amendment uh, that's being added uh, to divide. Um, and, um, you know, we know that they need Democratic votes to pass uh, spending bills. We know that. Um, and if this is their attempt uh, to put an issue in place uh, that's a poison pill, it's on them. Uh, we're not adding this. We're not adding anything to it uh, at this point. Uh, and so, um, really, it's, it's, uh, it's of the Republicans' own making at this point. Uh, as I've said before, the wall does not do anything to make us a safer country. It doesn't do anything to improve our economy. You can't drive on the wall. You know, it doesn't produce anything. Uh, it's just, it zaps the American people of billions and billions of dollars. And, you know, whatever happened to the notion or idea that Mexico was going to pay for a wall? And then I was told the sun was going to pay for the wall through so solar paneling. And now apparently it's going to come out of defense uh, spending. Um, one, they should make up their minds as to who's going to pay for it. Uh, but clearly, uh, uh, it is the American people that are going to pay for that if it is ever built. Um, I oppose it vehemently. I will not vote for uh, a bill that has any uh, language that would pertain to the construction uh, of, a, of a wall on our southern or any part of our borders. Yeah, I would just add that um, the Republican leadership knows that um, the majority of the Democratic caucus is vehemently opposed uh, to funding for the wall. It's a medieval solution to a modern problem, and it's uh, not going to function uh, to make this country any safer. Um, the difficulty is that, you know, they have a hard time keeping their caucus together and getting them to vote in a block, and yet they are the majority. So knowing that they need Democratic votes to add that to their appropriations bill is basically a poison pill, and they risk not having the votes to pass the bills and shutting the government down. But that's on them. They are in the majority. They are in control. Um, but it's a, um, a funny way of uh, trying to reach consensus or, or trying to win over Democratic votes for appropriations bills. Well, I would say there are a number of taxes within the um, within the ACA that um, the Republican health care bill uh, seeks to strip out because primarily that bill is not about providing better health care or more coverage or more affordability. It's, it's, a, it's a tax bill, and it's a tax bill intended to uh, uh, roll into the tax proposal that they want to uh, to try to pass as well. And I, you know, it depends on, you know, what other taxes in the bill they, they repeal or, or they touch. I, we have to look at the, the bill on balance to see what it would, you know, how it would impact, um, you know, working class Americans and, and, and average Americans. But, uh, you know, the basics of the Republican health care bill are so fundamentally flawed that I have a hard time seeing how playing around the edges would make it somehow palatable to bring it back to the House for um, Democratic support. And what I believe you see happening here is an attempt by McConnell to massage both the moderates as well as the extreme right wing within his caucus. Uh, everything and anything he possibly can do to get anything passed for a political objective and not a policy objective. And really, I think the real big question is, what is this, uh, what happens to Medicaid expansion? And that's still the underlying issue. Uh, we know uh, from the previous three attempts, both in the House uh, and in the Senate, uh, that they've uh, uh, cut back the roles by uh, 23 million, 22 million, approximately, individuals. Uh, what effect will this, uh, keeping the tax cut in, have on that? Uh, minimal, if there's s still a, uh, uh, a rollback on Medicaid expansion. Uh, so I just think this is just, again, it's not about the policy. It's about how do they get the 51 votes. It's a numbers game for them right now and not about – how it will affect people's lives or what effect uh, the uh, dismantling of the Affordable Care Act will have on people's lives. 
Yes. Do you think uh, Donald Trump Jr. broke the law? And also, what do you think is the next step you know, after what he uh, declared about his meeting yesterday, described the meeting yesterday? Um, what's, what's next? I, I, I appreciate the work of both uh, the House and the Senate uh, uh, intelligence committees in terms of what they're um, um, uh, proposing to do. And uh, I know the Senate has already indicated they want to hear from uh, Mr. Donald Trump Jr. Uh, I'm sure the special prosecutor, uh, Mr. Mueller is also interested um, in this, uh, whether as to whether or not he broke the law or not, I'm not an attorney, uh, but uh, I do think uh, that uh, this uh, would give new meaning to Operation Research, uh, which is a uh, fairly common term in politics, um, uh, where one side uh, does op uh, op opposition research to find the negative issues that pertains to the opposition team. In this case, uh, the Trump team trying to find out uh, dirty issues on uh, Hillary Clinton. Um, that's done by hiring Americans typically to do that, not by uh, getting it from Ireland uh, or France or Germany or certainly our adversary, Russia. Uh, if it were done uh, by Great Britain giving us the information, that in of itself would be improper. Um, uh, and uh, I believe, I believe um, my reading of the statute, illegal. Uh, but whether or not it, it, it constitutes an illegal act is up to uh, uh, up to the judicial system to determine that. Um, but to actually uh, accept this meeting, knowing that the purpose of the meeting was to give dirt on Hillary Clinton, and that that would be good, especially at the end of the summer, um, was a clear indication that what they were looking for from this Russian agent was information uh, garnered by the Russian government uh, to undermine the campaign of Hillary Clinton. To me. It may be beyond illegal. It may be beyond illegal. And if I could just add to that, I mean, um, this week's revelations are pretty clear in black and white. If you look at the text of the emails themselves, um, there was a willingness to collude with foreign operatives. Um, and ultimately, the special prosecutor uh, will decide whether or not that breaks the law. But what is stunning is the absolute silence from Republicans. Um, I'm shocked that nobody has come out and said this is unacceptable no matter who sits in the White House. This is our democracy that we are talking about. We are talking about the undermining of the pillars of our democracy. And yet Republicans seem all too willing to just go along to get along instead of calling out the president and his team for what they have done. Uh, if the shoe were on the other foot, you can bet that they'd be screaming to the rafters about the need for prosecutions and uh, and investigations, and yet Firing squads. they are, uh, you know, putting their party above the best interests of our country and above uh, um, the soundness of our democracy. I, I, f I find it shocking, quite frankly, that there isn't a chorus of voices saying this is completely unacceptable and will not be tolerated. And yet, apparently, that's what Republicans feel is okay. The lies, the shifting explanations, when the information is available in black and white, um, the fact that nobody has had the courage to stand up and speak out on the Republican side of the aisle, including the Republican leadership, speaks to what their values are for this country. Um, and, you know, in my humble opinion, they don't have the best interests of our country at heart. They have their own political interests in mind uh, when they refuse to act and refuse to stand up and speak out. I, th I think uh, Ms. Sanchez really hit on a, a, an important point. All we're hearing right now is crickets, with the exception of, I believe, of Lee Zeldin from Long Island, who said uh, that would be a big no-no. Sounds like Donald Trump's getting ground. D Donald Trump Jr. is getting grounded, or he's going to bed without his dinner. That to be that seems to be the extent of uh, the action they'll take. Uh, it's going to take a lot more than that to understand uh, that our country was attacked uh, in a, by Russia uh, in the hacking of our political process, uh, not only an attempt to undermine the faith of the American people in the democratic process here in America, but to actually to undermine the election of Hillary Rodham Clinton and to give that information, that damaging information uh, collected by Russia to the Trump team, uh, and to hear the utter silence uh, from the other side of the aisle in the House of Representatives. There's been a little bit more, a little bit more boisterous in the Senate. Uh, uh, Mr. M uh, McCain uh, 
uh, and a few others have been a little bit more outspoken. But it's, it's, it's almost without, that's a big no-no. Uh, it's, it's, it's silence, quite frankly, here in the House of Representatives, from the leadership on down or the bottom up. Well, thank you all very much. We hope you uh, enjoy uh, the next couple of weeks.